Chairman, I'm going to make a few brief comments, and then I'd like to introduce uh, one of our witnesses in the second panel. I know this is run a little longer than people expected, so we'll, we'll move quickly here. Um, we've talked about today there are more than 4,700 identified PFAS chemicals, and these chemicals have been around for a long time, since the 1940s, found in everything from firefighting foams to food wrappers to cleaning products, even clothing, been used in manufacturing for decades to make products that are resi uh, resistant to heat, oil, stains, grease, and water. With the increasing awareness of potential PFAS exposures, particularly from drinking water systems, I share the concerns of a lot of my constituents in the state of Ohio and in communities around the country about the impact PFAS contamination has on their health and the health of their families. In 2016, EPA established lifetime drinking water health advisory levels for two of the most prevalent and widely researched PFAS chemicals. That's PFO and PFOS, based on scientific studies that indicated exposure could result in adverse health effects. Although this, these chemicals were voluntarily phased out of production in the United States, their persistence in the environment remains a serious cause for concern, uh, including in our case at the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. According to CDC, NIH, EPA, research is still ongoing regarding the impacts exposure to PFAS chemicals can have on human health. As I talked about earlier, we need to move up this research accelerated as quickly as possible. It will help ensure we have a coordinated, effective federal effort to address and minimize PFAS contamination. So we know the scope of the problem, so we can better provide our communities with accurate information if risks are present. As we consider new options for addressing PFAS through policy and regulation, it's imperative that our approach be informed by science and by evidence. It's equally important that the federal government maintain strong partnerships with our state and local actors who are the first line of defense with regard to all health hazards in our communities. Uh, to that end, I'm pleased the bipartisan infrastructure legislation that's now law provides an historic commitment to strengthen and upgrade our nation's water infrastructure, including $10 billion to help states address PFAS in drinking water. Talking about the states, I'm pleased to introduce one of our witnesses for the second panel. Um, Mark Johnson from Ohio EPA is with us. Mark is the Deputy Director of Business and Regulatory Affairs and has been an instrumental figure behind the state of Ohio's efforts I talked about earlier to develop and implement a statewide action plan on PFAS. Ohio has taken an effective approach, in my view, to identifying and helping to address PFAS contamination within the state. Mark will bring a valuable perspective to our hearing today. We look forward to hearing from you, Mark. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mr.